Okay. Good morning, everybody. Hope you don't have a, too much of a hangover uh, because yesterday there was a party. I didn't. I wasn't there, so. Um, but I'm glad to see some faces. Uh, just one uh, practical remark. My colleague uh, in the the first part is more inspirational, and the second part is more hands-on, where you can do the the things on your uh, computer to install the personalization on your Drupal on your local machine. Uh, if you're interested in doing that. It's interesting to come to sit in front because if you have issues, my colleague will come around and assist you. And yeah, if he doesn't have to go around too much, that will be good. Okay, let's get started then. Who are we? I'm Frederick Wouters. Sorry, I don't have my mask. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my, my name is Wesley. I'm an enterprise architect at uh, Drop Solid, uh, just as uh, Frederick. I'll be mostly helping you around in the uh, more hands-on part. Uh, we work for DropSolid. DropSolid is a Drupal company based in Ghent in Belgium. It's a, it's a long list from here, I understand, but uh, some small things. We've been growing really fast the uh, last eight years. Uh, we've around, yeah, there's it's a 70 jobs, but I think we're around 100 people now, I think. Uh, we do some pretty large customers more and more. Um, yeah, and uh, today the agenda is going to be like this. So first I'm going to inspire you a little bit, uh, then we're going to do a live demo, and after that it's a hands-on workshop where we can, uh, where we will link Drupal with Mautic and Apache Onomi on your device, preferably, um, so that you can experience the personalization on your machine yourself. And after that we'll wrap up because there's a keynote. Let's get started. Did you know that 89% of customers begin doing business with a competitor following a poor customer experience? So people change when they have a poor experience. Did you know that when customers are targeted with three personalized pages, the conversion rates double, going from 1.7% to 3.4%? And that when they're exposed to 10 personalized pages, Conversion rates jump to 30%. So personalization really works. <clears throat> now, personalization, it's like buzzword, but what, what, what does that actually mean for you? How, how can you experience that? You can experience like this. Um, an example of this is uh, when you <clears throat> say, <clears throat> uh, Google Home, <clears throat> I would like to see this video. And it says, okay, I will show you the video, but maybe you need some cough drops because they were coughing. Uh, shall I order them at, for $2? That's like tailoring the experience to you. Um, some people might know Spotify Wrapped, where they, at the end of the year, like make your personalized musical experience. Uh, some people know this. They even go to look at the playlist of your friends and create something that is inspired by you and your friends, especially for you. It's unique, uniquely to you. Strava also does this. People that are or want to be athletic um, uh, also now get uh, personalized suggestions. Uh, in the bottom you see that the, the suggestions are more tailored to the distance that, that you do, to the speeds that you run, the types of routes that you do. So, um, And one of the nicest examples of personalization that I've, I personally found was what Netflix does. Not only do they recommend different videos to different people, but also how they construct a page based on what kind of things that you look and also which images that you see. You see here that all these images are the same show, the same video, and they will tailor it based on your preferences. Every, everything you see on Netflix is a recommendation. And they claim that 80% of what people watch comes from their recommendation, so it works. Yeah, uh, I don't have to explain this too much. Uh, Amazon also has these kinds of recommendations. As you see here, uh, there's new things that are based on your preferences. There's also items that you want to consider because in their, and this is already tying to what we're going to do later on, in their CDP customer data platform, they will save the things that you have looked for. And they see that you, uh, have more items to consider, like you were watching, looking at watches, and you might want to 
by a watch. Um, with the GDPR, it's of course very important to also let you control this. And in the bottom, you see the, the lowest green circle, view or edit your browsing history, where you can change these preferences in the CDP, in their central data, in their um, customer data platform. <clears throat> because if you were watching things that you might not want to show up in your Amazon front page, just leaving that out there. Uh, of course, they also do marketing automation. You can see here, they save these things in their CDP, and then they will send you an email based on your preferences. There, Chris, you were looking at cameras, you might be interested in this one. This is what we're going to do with Mautic. And we're trying to attempt a similar experience with Drupal and Mautic. <clears throat> can we do this in Drupal? I think we can at least go that direction. Uh, I have a video on that. Right now, and let's see if we can get this to play. Exciting. Wait. The Drop Solid Experience Cloud. The Drop Solid Experience Cloud enables you to optimize the customer experience, resulting in higher conversion rates and better customer satisfaction. Let's have a look at how this works. We have our anonymous surfer searching in Google for flower piece. There we go. Well, look at that. The first result she gets is Florista, a website with a fully integrated Drop Solid Experience Cloud. Our still anonymous visitor is browsing the homepage. She's scanning through the themes of the new collection, looking at the featured products, and taking a closer look at the upcoming workshops. While she's doing all that, the personalization AI is using his magic. By using machine learning, the AI identifies different segments of visitors and tries to fit our visitor in one of those segments. On the Florista website, there are three specific segments. There's the B2B prospect, the online shopper, and the explorer. He or she is now looking at the latest inspiration from the blog and is showing an interest in the first article. There's a great step-by-step -step guide on how to make your own flower arrangements. And there we go. The AI has identified this visitor as an explorer. That's how long it takes. Our explorer gets to the end of the blog article and fills in a form to receive a free download. Great! Now our explorer has a name and we even have her mailing address and consent to start sending newsletters. Our anonymous visitor isn't that anonymous anymore. Let's have a look at what information we've received. So. Her name is Sophia, Sophia Mertens. Her email address is sophia.mertens at gmail.com. And we know that she's an explorer. We even know what she looks like from the picture connected to her Google account. The log shows when she first visited the website and what actions she has performed. And now, the fun part. Let's put that information to good use. The next time Sophia visits the Florista website, the homepage looks slightly different. We know she's an explorer, not an online shopper or business, so the content has changed to reflect that. The subscription form for the workshops has been put at the top of the page, just the way Sophia likes it. As an explorer, she's eager to learn and get creative herself. She's not looking to buy a flower piece, not at this point at least. How great would it be if Sophia also received newsletters tailored to her needs? Oh, there's a new email. Let's see what's in it. Wow, workshops, tutorials, DIY packages, exactly what she was looking for. Now that's a great user experience. So, um, this is the thing that we're also going to build in the workshop later on, but on your machine, if you're willing. Um, what did you see? Uh, you saw a lot of touch points. A uh, person interacts with your website, but might also interact with other websites. And we're capturing that in the CDP, Apache Onomi in our case. Um, and this way, we save the preferences in the CDP. And also, this tracking information um, flows to Mautic. Uh, and with Mautic, when our segment is saved into Mautic, we can then go personalize uh, email newsletters to this person. Um, I'm going to quickly go over this again and explain some more details. So in the case that we're going to do later in the workshop, we're going to start from an advertisement and we're going to personalize the Drupal website content based on people that come from a specific ad. In this case, it's an Instagram ad for Mother's Day. 
uh, the person uh, clicks on this Mother's Day Instagram ad and will come to the Drupal website and we will personalize the Drupal experience based on this history. <clears throat> As you see here on, and on the front page, she will or he will get a different um, block in the bottom of the page. In our case, we will do it with a button or with something else just to personalize this uh, browsing experience. Then when the person is navigating the website and fills in a form, here you see in the red uh, square, um, data will be saved to Mautic. And then we can start sending emails to the person, which also have the uh, preferences that the user has. So we know that the person came from the UTM tracking campaign and is interested in Mother's Day uh, material, for example. So this way we can also personalize the emails to this person so that uh, they have like maximal feeling that they are getting real relevant content. So um, when they then come back to the website, you can see that we will change our front page. It will automatically change. We're not going to do it manually, of course. Uh, and they might see, for example, here's a form about uh, don't miss out on workshops, but they can like change whatever we did. Uh, this, this is also just to illustrate that you can personalize many uh, pieces of your web page based on this uh, segment. Okay, uh, all this is very nice and very cool, but it only gets real when you can also measure it and prove that it works. Uh, that's how it goes with sales. Um, these data also need to flow to Google Analytics so that you can prove that they are actually going into this funnel and that this thing actually works which segments you might want to focus on to improve conversions. Therefore, uh, it's also possible to have these dimensions flowing into Hotjar or Google Analytics, which I will also demo later on. Here you see uh, an analytics um, chart with three segments um, and uh, different goal conversion rates. Before we have these segments, this would just used to be one one number, one metric, and now you know that there's maybe different metrics for specific segments so that we can focus on a segment to have like higher conversion rates for these people in this specific segment. And you can then work on that by giving them different content in your CMS. Okay. Let's see if the demo gods are with us today. A live demo. Um, I'm going to start by explaining some of the parts. I didn't do that uh, too much into detail, but I'm going to go to this slide. So the three parts I'm going to illustrate are the content management system, which you know, uh, you're at a DrupalCon, that would, shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Uh, but I'm also going to show some Mautic, which is a marketing automation tool. And then also uh, Apache Unomi, which is a CDP. I'm going to start with the CDP. In uh, the Drupal Solid platform, we've made it, we've made a user interface for the CDP. Apache Unomi is a headless product, so it actually has just an API, and therefore in the Drupal Solid platform, we created an interface on a CDP that's running. You could also have Kibana or your own reports on it because it's based on Elasticsearch, and so this allows you to really work with it how you want, but we have a hosted solution and we have an interface in our platform to make it easier for customers. Um, what can you see in this? Um, this is, of course, let me take, let me take a production example. better with production data, you know. So here you see uh, profiles that are on the Drop Solid website. And there's already you see that there are current applications, um, applicants persona, uh, marketing personas. And then we've also the distinction first time visitors, returning visitors. Um, and you see that there's a, a number of uh, details that we save where the people are coming from. It's very similar to Google Analytics only. This data is saved in the CDP, so it's on, on our services, on our systems and you're not subject to uh, a 
special regulations because for um, European countries this is important because for some clients we cannot save this data in US clouds, for example, uh, because some of these details are, uh, yeah, that, that's how it goes with Google Analytics, you know. Um, so we also have this data in our CDP. And you see here that there are, you can also filter on the events. We track a lot of events, uh, clicking on pages, entering details in forms. Uh, you could also go into detail in these events in the uh, our CDP here. Um, and then there's the segments overview. And this is actually the cool part. There is two pieces of AI in these segments. Let me show, there's a, um, okay, means clustering. Uh, we are in the script tracking a lot of uh, events. And then with the K-means clustering algorithm, it looks like this. It will automatically detect segments that are in uh, the system. So this is the discovery mechanism in our platform. And you can then run multiple discoveries. So we can detect through two or three or four groups and it will automatically detect them with this algorithm. And this will give you then word clouds in this case. These are like, I randomly select one. Let me select another one, just see what's happening here. So this is about customers, experiences. This is about values, users. Here it's about clients, specific clients I see here, and trainings. And this is about DXP and like events. So when you say, okay, this, this looks like a very nice way to split our customers, then you can transfer these to segments. And when you can do that, you can see that there are these segments here. When you've created these segments, from that moment on, every page visit will be categorized. And this is also like a part of an AI, so every person that visits a page on the Dropsalt website will be run against these segments. So that we can like try to determine what kind of user you are. Are you an applicant? Are you, if you were looking at jobs, you were probably looking for a job, right? And then we can push a little bit uh, the contact form, get in touch. We want to, we want to talk with you, for example. Um, but it gets more interesting because not only can we automatically detect based on these segments, but we can do um, some manual rules as well. And these manual rules make it really powerful. You could say applicants from Belgium because we also geocode the IP address. <coughs> Let me add a rule here to illustrate that. Country. You could do country or country or city. Or you could say uh, people from Portland that are applicants. We might want to push them a separate form, uh, a separate one from the, like, the international uh, application form. And this way, you can really tailor your web experience to the needs of the visitors. These segments overview, um, are also pushed to Drupal. And this is what the Drupal integration does. We created and open sourced this module. Um, it's the Drop Solid personalization module. And it uh, works very nicely with the Drupal Unomi module. Um, and I'm now going to switch to the CMS side. So this is um, the Florista website, which you saw in the movie. Um, I've, I'm logged in as an administrator, and here you see the purple rain page. What is there special here? You see here there are two buttons. When I, as an anonymous visitor, open this page, there is only one button. This is because I'm in this specific segment. Of course, it's very hard. If you want to test this functionality, I need to show different behavior. So therefore, we created a browser plugin. Attention, let me refresh the page here. Session timed out. We've created an extension here, which allows us to, uh, to switch to different segments so that we can see how the content would look for a different segment. So now I'm in the Mother's Day segment, and then you see this content shows up for the Mother's Day visitors. People that came from the Instagram campaign, they clicked on Mother's Day, they will be shown this button. If they come from another segment or whatever, they will see the more creative ideas. They will get different content. You always, of course, need to uh, give it some fallback content because Google will index your site and will also need to see some things, right? Um, how does it work in the Drupal backend? 
here you see these are the buttons. Of course, as an administrator, you want to see all the content, but when you edit this, you can see that there is a field here in the bottom, you know me segment selection, which is the Apache you know me segment. And here you can select the segments that are from the uh, CDP. So it connects through the drop, the drop solid module, which actually just connects to Apache you know me, and then uh, fetches the segment so that you can select which segment wants to see this content. I hope you can see this and understand this because this is really cool. Um, yeah. And then the uh, Mautic part. So we want these people to convert. And converting for us means also getting their details. And we want to see these things uh, flowing to Mautic. So I have a Mautic install here. Um, here you can see in the contact tab, you will see the contacts of, of Mautic. Um, yesterday we did some tests, uh, Wesley and I. Let's see, he's still there. And when a person interacts with the site, there's also a tracking script. You will see that the interactions get uh, saved in like the tracking. And the moment they convert, uh, we know it here. And you can see the details of this person, the things that they entered and, uh, and everything. See if I have a more complete user. Okay. So you see, I entered my details here. Um, what else did I need to tell you? I don't think. Um, personalization in Drupal, CDP. I think that's uh, the most important part. So here you see connection details also in the, the platform. There are some settings because we also integrate with Google Analytics and Mautic. You can use the tracking script from the product platform, but actually this is just uh, some JavaScript that we generate for you. You could also write this yourself, and this is no, no rocket science. Um, I think this is it for the, like, the demonstration. I hope you understand this, and I think now we can switch to the do it on your machine, like the workshop part of it. Um, Wesley, do you think that's a good idea? Yes? Yes. Okay. So if yes, you are uh, sure. ready to uh, do this on your machine, you can follow along. I've prepared some slides. I've also um, done it, and you can follow the steps along if you're not going to do it on your machine. But I think you should try it because it's uh, fairly easy to do. The only thing that you need is PHP and Composer. Uh, we, we're not going to set up databases and everything. We are using the Drupal uh, installation, so it will run like like a charm. The point is set up your Drupal, and I've prepared all the code and the scripts on this gist. So if you uh, find this URL, you can uh, find the gist. It's like a, a script with all the steps that we need to do. Um, <coughs> if, you, if you're stuck at any moment, just raise your hand, and I'll come to you and help you out. While you're typing that, are there questions? Yes, so the question is, um, we're looking at Mautic and Unomi. Uh, it doesn't look that Mautic requires Unomi, and that is uh, absolutely correct. So Mautic could also be used in a standalone way. It's a marketing automation tool. It, it, long story short, it sends emails. Um, if you're interested in more details about Mautic, Ruth is also here. She knows everything about it. She's a project lead, so she knows like everything about it. But uh, a little more, a little longer explanation is you can set up campaigns. Uh, they ca you can create forms, you can set white paper downloads and all these kind of things. So um, it's an advanced marketing automation tool that is open source. And Apache Unomi is a CDP which captures client data, uh, which captures consents and saves it into an Elasticsearch database. So, but you can combine them and have them work together and that's what we at DropSolid also focus on. Like, like have a digital experience platform that combines these tools uh, seamlessly together. Okay, next question. Hi. Hello. 
Um, I noticed when you were doing the Drupal portion, mm -hmm. you had multiple buttons for the different segments. When those, I was curious about how those are rendered. Um, for someone who gets to the page, is there some Java, like is that HTML for all the buttons on the page and then you just show the one or are they rendered based It's a good on the question. Second? Yeah, so um, the question, yeah. Um, what happens is uh, we're only rendering the page for the specific user and uh, it's gonna render server side. So we also have a vary based on the segments or the properties that you have as a user. So this way we can also cache these things for specific segments. And uh, also, we also have a JavaScript snippet, which also does this for front-end applications. So you could also do this, uh, render the full HTML, and then just toggle the visibility with JavaScript based on the segments that you're in. And so you can do both, both ways. But in the Drupal module that isn't on drupal.org, it just displays for the specific um, user that you see server-side. There's a follow-up question, Leslie. I was just going to say the, the JavaScript thing is for, we use it for non Drupal sites. Is there, is, is there a corresponding cache tag for Drupal that's specific? To it's using the HTTP um, standard, uh, very, heavy, very heavy. Oh, okay. So we can use Drupal's caching system to cache all the different segments? Yes, it, yeah. Okay. There's one uh, conflict with internal page cache, but uh, for the rest, everything with caching just works. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. More questions? No more questions. Let's dive into it then. So uh, with this script, the first step is to uh, download uh, Drupal. This unzips uh, a Drupal with um, Database, not a MySQL database, but um, I, the name is on the tip of my tongue. Uh, SQLite. SQLite database and uh, run it on your machine. Then you will need to install these Composer, uh, these Drupal modules, so the Unomi module, the Drop Solid personalization module, which builds on top of the Unomi module, the Mautic paragraph, which will connect to Mautic, and the asset injector, which will allow you to inject the JavaScript or tracking on your website. Then with the script on the bottom, you can start this uh, start, you can start this uh, Drupal site, and it's the demo Umami. So this is uh, the Drupal provided uh, Umami website, which has content, which has recipes and everything in there, so you can just uh, run it locally. If there's no hesitations or uh, people yelling, I'm going to go to the next one please let me know if I'm going too fast. You don't have to type this, by the way. Eh? In the GIST, all this code is there. You can just copy-paste it. For people that are typing it, just letting you know. Then, in our Drupal, we're going to uh, set things up and install the required modules. We're going to the Modules Overview page and install the, uninstall the internal page cache module. Where are you? Uh, so install, uninstall internal page cache. Exactly. I, I cannot explain in detail. I, I haven't built uh, the Drop Solid personalization module myself, um, but I could uh, give you more details about that if you're interested. Let's, let's, let's connect uh, at the end, right? I'm really interested in uh, your question. Uh, so, internal page cache. Then uh, you need to enable the Drop Solid Personalization module, Mautic Paragraph, and Asset Injector module. If I'm going too fast, yell. Huh? I see some people are following, so I'm going to hold there a little bit. Enabling thing in Drupal looks like this. You might know this screen. Then we're going to add the tracking scripts. Um, the CDP 
Yes, Ruth has a question, uh, Leslie. Ah. Leslie will come to you. Good. In, in the, this is the tracking script that Apache Unomi provides to, um, to capture all the events on the front end so that we can start building a profile on the user. We will need to put this in the asset injector. Asset injector is a module that allows you to add JavaScript in the header of your Drupal website. And we will, um, I put the script in the, um, the gist, so take it, just grab it there and put it in asset injector. Small detail, uh, asset injector doesn't allow a script tag, so you need to like uh, remove those and then it will surround it with script tags for you. It looks like this. Click on the add button, enter the JavaScript, and then we need another script because we're going to do it with UTM. And we're going to go from the Instagram campaign We're going to go from the UTM campaign, so therefore we also need the UTM parameters in our CDP. Now, the CDP, and this is actually a cool detail, allows you to, from the front end, add properties to user objects. It's not hard-coded, so here in JavaScript, in the front end, we add UTM campaign as a property to our user profile. You see, changed capture dot te UTM campaign, by doing this, it will just add this property to the user. You can add whatever property you want to the user profile like this. If you say, okay, I want this person to have an object with things that I saw on the shop or categories that I've filtered on or search terms that I looked for on the website, you can just add them like that. And then also in the segmentation, people that have been looking for this kind of products in this segment, people that have been looking for these kind of products in another segment and show them different things on the website. It's really powerful, right? <laughs> but so this script adds the UTM campaign parameter to our customer profile and changes the capture, so like lets it flow to Apache Unome. Coming along, there we go. And then we have our last JavaScript, which is the Mautic tracking script. Because we're using multiple tools, Mautic also does some tracking for the page visits and, and these kind of things. So Mautic also has a tracking script. It's also in the GIST. And we also create an asset for that in Drupal. It looks like this. And you can fetch it on Mautic. So in Mautic, you see here on the configuration tracking settings, there is the tracking script, which you can then use in your Drupal uh, website in the asset injector. I've also added it to the GIST. Uh, it should look like this in your Drupal. I you should have Mautic script, the personalization script, and the UTM script. So, yeah, you can, you can just copy all the scripts, just repeating uh, here. Uh, just copy all the scripts from the GIST and then make each of them and uh, then you're golden, I guess. Okay. Then we need to configure Mautic so that it will link with Drupal. Uh, so in Drupal, we want to select a form, but we're not going to code it. We're not going to use iframes and stuff like that. We just want a reference to the form. How are we, how are we going to do that? We enabled the Mautic Paragraphs module. Um, in Mautic, we need to set up an OAuth Two key. I've created a Mautic for you, so you can navigate to the URL on top here. It's also in the GIST, and create yourself some credentials. This is the username and the password for this Mautic, so you can log into that and create your own credentials. If you're following along the demo, you need to do this. You can then go to the API credentials page create a personal key in secret, and save them in your notes app or already uh, in your Drupal settings form.
then we are going to configure this in Drupal. These are the settings, so this is the URL. You can see it also in the GIST. It looks like this. In the Drupal Mautic settings screen, you can choose either basic auth or OAuth. Um, why is this there? The normal Apache Unomi connector only uses basic auth. At Drop Solid, we have our Apache Unomis behind OAuth, so it's a different kind of security thing. If for this demo, uh, we're using um, Apache Unomi behind OAuth, you select that one, then you choose HTTPS, choose the base URL, client ID and the secret that you just generated. You enter these into your Drupal, and then you will see that you have successfully connected Drupal to Mautic, and you will be able to select forms in your Drupal. Looks like this. Okay, and then we're going to configure Unomi. So we're going to link Unomi to Drupal. These are the settings. Uh, this is the setting screen. I've also prepared uh, Unomi client ID and secret so that you can connect it directly, which uh, saves you the hassle of setting it up yourself. You could do it, and uh, in a next demo, we're going to prepare it with Docker images and everything. But for now, you can just use our, use our cloud version. These are the credentials. And configuring it in Drupal looks like this. Um, this is a very similar. We have the Unomi connector. Drop solid platform, which uses OAuth, or you can choose the basic auth one. And then you put on the Unomi host, Unomi port. And for Drop solid, you use a personalization integration settings, client ID and secret. If you use the basic auth, it would give you like a username and a password. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty straightforward. But it's easy if uh, you don't screw up. When you save these fields, it looks like this. You have a success successfully connected to the Drupal platform. After that, yeah, we're working with Drupal. Don't forget to clear the cache. Okay. Then we're going to place our modic form and only show it to a specific segment. So this is personalization working. Uh, how do we configure this in Drupal? We're going to the admin structure block page. There we're going to click on the place block uh, button. You're going to click on the add custom block and there we're going to create a block with a download your Drupal certificate, a wonderful picture. Um, and we're going to select specific segment. So I've created a campaign for you, inbound campaign for Drupal Comp PDX, and you can select this segment when creating this button. It looks like this. Click on place block on uh, the content region, or if you want it to be higher in the page in the highlighted region in your demo website. You click on the add custom block button. And then here on the bottom of the block, you can choose the inbound campaign for Drupal Comp PDX. This segment selection, this is the personalization at work. It will only show this block for the segment that the user is in. This is like, this is the magic. This is the secret sauce. Uh, and then getting it, like seeing it working is when you surf to one of the recipes, in the, in the demo it's Crema Catalana, and you will see that the form is not there. And I would suggest you navigate through the website, see some other pages, and then when you open a recipe with the UATM campaign, because you're coming from the Instagram ad, and you see the, you see the form, then you can enter your details, and then you will see in the Mautic instance, with your contact details, all the surfing behavior that you did, the segment that you were added to, and then you can, we could, for example, start mailing you with personalized preferences. So uh, this is how you could do it. Um, so what did, you, what did you also see in the presentation? Uh, we created a browser plugin to test that. It's also in the Google extension store. You can just find it there. If you have questions about that, uh, hit me up. We're uh, more, more than happy to talk about them. We also use Launchpad for local development, but um, we're going to move to maybe Gitpod or something else. Um, we also have a, a Apache Unomi Google Data Studio plugin because 
I've showed it in the platform. There were some CUMU um, dashboards, but of course, it's more interesting to have them in your dashboarding system. So that's why we created the Data Studio, Google Data Studio plugin, so you can integrate this you know me um, data into your custom reporting. And we're done. In the future, we can. Uh, there's much more kind of things that you can personalize on. We have some clients that are uh, experimenting with. Um, when in Belgium we have a Corona barometer, so when Corona is high, we want to show them different content. When Corona is low, we want to show them different content because in a in a dense city and the Corona barometer is high, maybe you want the people to go to parks outside of the city. And when Corona is low, you want the people to go into the museums because there's not too much people. And so these are cool personalization kind of things. You could do that all in Drupal. Of course, you can do it in Drupal. But if it's automatically based on an external system and the segment, people are added to the segment, you don't have to change a thing in Drupal and it will automatically change the content for the people. Um, another alternative, uh, there's many, many, many cool things that you can do with it. Um, okay. I think this is the end of our presentation, so uh, time for our closing notes. Right on time, because we have only five more minutes. Um, I added the Docker Compose files. If you want to do uh, Apache you know me with Docker Compose or Mautic with Docker Compose, you could check those out. I will also share them. They will also be in the, on the DrupalCon site, so you can start playing with that uh, locally if you want to really run them locally. Um, and. Uh, that's it. So uh, this is the Drupal digit, the Drop Solid Open Digital Experience Platform. And if you are interested in more details, certainly uh, contact us. Uh, can you do this yourself? Well, yeah, we'll just uh, run around it. Uh, if you're more interested in getting it to work on your, it can work with whatever site you have. So if you want your site to connect to the Drop Solid platform for the CDP and your own Matic, or you want to have your your own Matic with the Drupal on our side, or you want to run your own you know me with our ai all these combinations are possible so we are really open uh hit us up if you're uh, interested in more details um that's it i think we have four more minutes so some questions is certainly not a not a problem yes Yeah, I'm just um, curious from a sort of a high level, big picture. I work in the public sector in Canada, and we've got, we need to follow pretty strict privacy and um, disclosure information. So when you're using this kind of combination of tools, uh, and I know Europe has got very strict standards in, in this area as well, can you just talk a little bit about some of the strategies you use or at what points do you engage people to let them know in terms of their tracking and how to consent? Yeah, good question. So, um, Apache you know me has on their website that it's great with their GDPR, like, in built-in. So there is also an uh, opt-in mechanism, an opt-in, uh, uh, let's say, field or, or uh, thing in Apache you know me. And it's also uh, following European regulations, so the opt-in expires. Uh, so that's that's for that part. Of course, at Drupal we also have the EU EU cookie compliance module, which also follows EU regulations. At Drop Solid we use that one a lot. And we also contribute to it. So uh, I think that's always a good idea to to be in the front end compliant. And you could use that one just for the consent as well. The only difference there is if you have multiple sites with the EU cookie compliance module, you will have multiple cookies that you need to click through because there are different domains. If you use the consent centrally in the user profile, then you know it in the CDP, so you know it across the multiple domains. That's like multiple strategies to tackle that. Um, in the CDP, um, it's save data on the customer. So we also have some clients that are, uh, let's say, GDPR sensitive, uh, and they run their own CDP on in the data center. They don't want this customer data to be in the cloud. And then our AI system does the discovery and the segmentation in the cloud, but we connect their CDP 
in their data center. And so if it's really like sensitive for your customer, like government, you could run the CDP on your systems. And then it's in-house. And for Matic, it's the same. It's like Drupal, you can run it in the cloud, but you could also run it yourself. So I think that's uh, that's answers that question. So I'm going to repeat the question. Can we compare uh, Matic with Pardot? Um, uh, I personally have no experience with Pardot. I've seen it being compared uh, in some, yeah, like uh, CDP and marketing automation comparisons. Um, I think maybe that's something that Ruth can uh, can elaborate on a little more. Uh, she she knows more than me about this. So, uh, but uh, also if you like, maybe we can go into detail uh, after the session. I think we have one more minute, so um, I have some things that I know about it. But yeah. Yeah, let's uh, conclude here then. Thank you for uh, attending the session and uh, have a, enjoy your keynote and the rest of the conference. Thank you.